What's something that has improved your mental health that you wish you started doing earlier? I stopped expecting people to one, care as much as I do and two, behave like I would. Meditation, exercise classes, cycling, giving up caffeine, yoga, pilates, herbal tea, magnesium. My anxiety has gotten really bad, so I made all these changes and definitely feel better. Gratitude journaling. I did the 100 days of happiness challenge a few years ago. The idea is you take one photo a day of something that made you happy. After a couple of weeks you find you're actively looking for the happy. Then I continued with writing three positive things in my life every morning before I start my day. Really helped me to get out of the doom spiral since 2016. Learning how to say no. Working my wage. I get paid X amount and my hours are from a to B. Anything occurring outside those hours, not my problem. Anything not in my contract, not my problem. Artsy stuff. I've started coloring a lot and even painting. I'd like to learn how to crochet next. Honestly, it's not even the coloring, it's hobbies. I was so depressed I never tried to find any and didn't know what my interests were. I'm just starting to learn now. Going to therapy and sticking with it. Turning all but the pertinent notifications off on my putting a hair tie on my phone as a physical barrier to entry. Deleted social media. 1. This helps me stay more present and less in my comparing my life to others has significantly decreased. And it def has made me a lot it's easy to forget that social media is all an illusion. People only post the good stuff on highly recommend doing a social media detox to start with and see how you feel. I plan on deleting it forever after college. Being selfish and allowing my life to revolve around me only. Working out and therapy. Stopping alcohol and coffee. Taking care of myself and my health. Antidepressants. I don't know if this is allowed psilocybin mushrooms. I know it's unconventional and illegal everywhere, but I have severely medication-resistant depression, and it's the only thing I've found that can pull my out of a funk and keep me out of it. I do it about once every one to two weeks. The day after I can sometimes be irritable, but the whole rest of the week I can function like a regular person. I know people microdose them but I actually do enjoy the trips. I have been terrified of them my whole life because of the horror stories you hear with bad trips and all that. I regret so much not trying them when I was younger. My life, and my sanity, could have been so much a disclaimer though, if you are on certain types of antipsychotic medications, they will not work at all. No trip, no pretty colors, nothing. I have been off all antidepressant medications since October and tried the mushrooms the first. Time on New Year's Eve, so there was a couple months gap between being medicated and trying them. Dot, and hash x200b. Edit. If anyone has questions I can try and answer them, all for sharing info. Therapy, it made the biggest difference in my life. Wish I had gone earlier in my life. Not that I had any huge massive issues or anything, but every single person has their own little issues that stems from childhood. Once I worked through those and learned healthy coping mechanisms my life just got a whole lot easier and I blossomed. Seeing a therapist, walking in parks, reading a book before bed instead of scrolling through my phone. I recently started setting weekend days off for myself instead of hanging out with friends cause it felt like I'm always on someone else's time and never my own. Keeping on top of the laundry and doing a small amount of housework every day instead of just living in a mess. Going off the pill. Leaving a toxic job that made me suicidal, I'm in a much better place mentally now. Exercise. It's amazing how much better I feel after I get the lead out. The small winds of pants fitting me better is huge for my self-esteem too. Bigger though is letting go of needing to be liked and taking a so personally. Some people you just can't please. Some people just don't like you for no good reason. As long as you do your best and lead with kindness, the haters gonna hate no matter what. Stop talking to my dad. Allowing myself to cry, like full a sobbing. Having a lot more. Not ignoring my past trauma and feeling sorry for myself, but knowing it shaped me from working through those emotions and hurts to then allowing myself to heal from accepting that I never properly formed a sense of self. Figuring out what exactly fit to form a sense of who I was as an individual. Learning that I am in control of my life and my responsibilities of what that means. 
supporting others as they also go through this journey that is not easy by any means. Learning to trust others, therapist, boyfriend, best friend, children, talking openly about things with those I trusted and hopefully helping my children to understand we are all stronger than we think and in turn hoping the history of family abuse ends for good and future generations can consist of strong individuals. Getting a full blood panel done. Turns out I'm insulin resistant paired with low blood sugar and deficient in vitamin D, B and iron. It explained my tiredness, low mood, inability to concentrate, and anxiety. For years I had been in and out of doctor's offices only to be told that nothing is wrong with me. I decided to go to a naturopath and that's where I got my answers. I recently saw a reel where the lady said, sometimes we want our version of perfection to look like someone else's version of perfection, or we want their version of perfection to look like she was talking about letting people be themselves as they're instead of trying to be more like them or trying to get them to be more like us. Yes, this is a realization I'm finally coming to at age 35. Same here. I am happy you are feeling better Purple Heart I had severe clinical depression my entire life. At the age of 25, I started doing 5 minutes of yoga and 5 minutes of meditation every day. I made a habit of it, no days off. Some days I would just crawl onto my yoga mat and stare at the ceiling, but I still made it onto the mat. Eventually, I could do a little more each and then a little more. After a year, I felt well enough to do an hour of Pilates, HIIT, yoga and, or dance every day. Three years later, I'm in the best shape of my life. I've gone back to university. I'm chasing my dreams. I have healthy relationships. Daily exercise and meditation changed my life. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful it has helped you too. I'm currently considering getting magnesium. Which one did you go for please? And how did you come to that choice? This, I've been a people pleaser pretty much my whole life, and it started to take a toll on my own well-being. I always remind myself that I am the sun and anyone else in my life is just a planet. Once you let someone else become your sun, the whole system will fall apart. Yes, girl, when I started seriously dating after college I ended up dating two guys, one for three years and another for one year who expected my life to revolve around them and their needs, needs for constant attention and feeding their egos. In college I didn't date because I found most guys really needy and I didn't want to deal with it at 27 I decided to be selfish and not compromise my need for personal space and my need to do the things I want to do without having some guy badgering me about how it's selfish of me to not see them for a whole weekend because I want to go visit my family or go on a girl's trip for a week. Luckily I found a dude who likes personal space as much as I do. I always thought all men are needy AF and toxic but a I just kept getting interest from the wrong people from age 18 to 26. I actually made the decision today, after talking with my doctor of course, to go down on my dose. It's been 3 years and I've worked hard and I'm ready to taper off. Tapering might still take a long but progress. Oh my yes, it's been a night and day difference for me over the last year. They recently covered this on Last Week Tonight with John Oliver and how it's showing promise on people with clinical depression and PTSD, even problems with addiction. Looks intriguing to me as a clinically depressed person as it's been effective for many people in a short time, months, but still way shorter than other options, and make people less likely to relapse. They also mentioned that psychedelics do make it easier to confront your problems than deflect. Was that your experience as well? I'm happy you found something that works for you. As someone who has struggled with depressive thoughts for almost 10 years I'm definitely interested in going this route, especially with all the studies I keep seeing. For anyone reading this they are legal in DC. I'm curious why your doctors didn't pursue blood testing and just gaslit you instead like, blood testing is such an asset to monitor someone's health. I was recommended it by an optician as I mentioned that I felt stressed. I bought magnesium glycinate as I read that's the most tolerated form. I take one before bed, and it really helps me sleep. I would link it but I'm in England so it's probably not helpful unless you are too low. Definitely worth a shot. I got off of it, and though I may be a man, I just want to share a crazy thing I've noticed now that I'm off the throughout my waking life, there was always this undercurrent of anxiety and I don't like existing, nest to it. Like, just being was uncomfortable. Now that I'm off the caffeine, 
I realized I was just living with this constant background noise of anxiety and do what I do, and use it if you're sick and have vacation time. The illness covers up the withdrawals, lol. Then you come out of it better equipped. The feeling after saying no, it's stressing for a while at first, then few days, and now probably moments, but hey it does pay off. I know being a PP might never heal completely it's difficult because you still want to balance giving yourself and giving others too.